Okay, so maybe it went down something like this. You meet this new person and they are just wonderful. I mean, they are generous and kind and thoughtful and appreciative and they're showing you all of this attention. Maybe they're texting you all day long or they want to call you and just tell you that they're thinking about you and how much they love you and all of this stuff. And it's just like, it's just this intense amount of attention and you're thinking, wow, and then this person sits there and they ask you questions and they want to know, like, what was it like growing up? And like, you know, what are your dreams and goals? And what are the things that are most important to you? And then little by little, they're also kind of working in, you know, some questions about like, what are you afraid of? Like, what are your fears? And, you know, what are your vulnerabilities? And what are the things that people have done to hurt you before? And in what ways is your heart hurting? And essentially you're thinking, wow, this person's like really listening to me and they care and they want to know about me and they want to get to know me and nobody ever really listens like that or really cares. And, and so you're just revealing everything and you don't realize that this is all sort of part of the interview process. You're getting pre-screened to see if you qualify and, you know, they're listening for things like compassion and empathy and understanding and forgiveness and optimism and this giving nature, right? And so you're rolling along and a few months go by. I mean, it could be anywhere from two to six months, but usually by six months, now this new cycle has started and all of a sudden, uh, you know, it goes back and forth between like this very sweet and kind and thoughtful person and then this very suddenly mean person and by mean I mean like there's all these little digs at you and like whatever your buttons are or whatever your biggest fears or vulnerability or insecurities are it kind of seems like this person is just like hitting them and but maybe it's done through joking and like oh, I'm just kidding baby like I really didn't mean that or you know maybe it's just like it's it's just done so subtly that when you call it out they're like no no that's not what's happening no no that's not what I meant at all that's just you you're hypersensitive it's your problem you know that you don't like the way I'm talking to you or or what's happening then is like you know something happens and then you're like you know, this happened and, and I really didn't like that. Like that was like kind of a scary experience. And then the person's like, that didn't happen like that. You know, you're just, you're perceiving this in your own way. That's just you. That's your perception. And that's not what happened. Or, you know, you do something and then like you're humiliated for it. And it's like, maybe it's meant as a joke. You know, it seems like it's a joke or maybe like they're just flat out humiliating you for something that you did. And so you start to feel like, you know, kind of shitty about yourself. And then, you know, this kind of thing goes on and on. And then all of a sudden, like you're just deep into this like depreciation phase. And it's like nothing you can do is right. This person is constantly second guessing you and undermining everything that you think, everything that you do. You're like, but wait a second, like, you know, a day ago or like a week ago or a month or a few months ago, when we talked about this, you were like totally on board and you were like, yeah, right? Like I totally agree and this and that. And now you're like doing the exact opposite, telling me the exact opposite. In fact, telling me like I'm stupid for believing that or caring about that or wanting to do that thing or like only people who are this and that way. Or like, remember all that attention you got at the beginning and it was like, you're so amazing, like you're so wonderful, like you're such a good this, that, and the other, right? And so now what's happening is like, this person comes to you and they're like, oh, you know, so-and-so. And this person is like somehow similar to you. They do something similar or they have a certain similar characteristic or quality and, and they're all like, you know, so-and-so is just so amazing. They are such a good blah, blah, blah. And they, I mean, it is just, they're so amazing. Can you just, I mean, listen to that or like hear that or look at that or like, wow, they just look amazing. I mean, they're just, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it just, something just doesn't feel right. And it's like all these experiences keep happening and you're like, something just doesn't feel right. And admittedly, when you look back in retrospection, you can see 
you knew something wasn't quite right, but it looked so nice at the beginning. And then what happened was by the time the mean cycle started, you're already in deep from like the earlier sweetness. And at this point you're rationalizing going, oh, but they're just having a rough time, you know, and often when you bring things up, you know, the person's like, oh yeah, like they're totally a victim of like what's happening and like, you know, everybody is out to get them and, you know, they're suffering so much and like, you know, you're supposed to have all this compassion and love for them, which you do because that's the kind of person you are. You just don't realize yet that you're being taken for a ride. And so like little by little, what's happening is like, you know, you, you can't focus on work anymore. And, and maybe even seemingly nothing awful happened that day, but you saw this person and now you're like trying to focus or maybe you got a text message or a phone call and then you go back to like do work or something and you like, you're just like, you can't focus, like you just can't, there's like this heavy fog what's going on here like I just don't have any motivation maybe even you realize that like your inner dialogue is now like berating yourself and you're cutting yourself down for something or like words that, that person said to you about something you did or how you are they're like ringing in your ear and you're like oh you know and like and maybe this person even like pressured you into doing things that you would never do or accepting things that you would never accept but like through this pressure and making you feel like you know, either you were closed-minded or unfair or, um, you know, somehow not a good person. Whatever your, your key buttons are, they're going to twist those. You're not a good person if you don't do this or there's something wrong with you if you don't accept this sort of treatment. And this goes on over a period of time and eventually you're starting to develop like headaches, like these weird like body aches, like suddenly your hips hurt or your back hurts or like maybe you wake up in the morning and like literally you can't even stand up. Something is so wrong in your body or maybe it's just like these constant migraines that you're getting or like this sudden like chronic digestive problem and like you just it's all messed up inside, you don't feel good, and you're like, what's going on? Like, nothing else is seemingly happening in your life, but there's this toxicity that is just bleeding through every area of your life because of this person's presence, but you don't realize it yet. You're not associating this person with it because you're still going back to the early days, right? This person was so amazing and they did this and that and you're like, I know they're just going through a hard time and, and they're going to they're gonna be all right and, and they're going to go back to being this person and we're going to go back to having these kinds of connections together and experiences together and because and, I know, I know what this person is capable of. Like, I know their potential and I love them and, and I forgive them for what they've done and when you call them out on what they did, you know, several different things can happen you know, maybe at the beginning they're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I really, yeah, I did. I'm so sorry. I would never, I would never hurt you intentionally. I don't want to do that to you again. Um, but then it happens again. In fact, it happens worse. And then more and more to the point where like now it's just become so common. Like you're just accepting this is normal you know, and then it gets to the point where you bring things up and now the person is on the defensive and now it's like, oh no, that's your problem. You're the one, you, and it's all twisted back to you. How could you even, how dare you say that? How could you suggest such a thing? I mean, what's wrong with you? What are you projecting? And you're like, um, okay. And so like you start like pussyfooting around and you start like making excuses for this person and, and inventing all these rationalizations, you know, about, well, well, maybe this or that, and you're second guessing your thoughts, feelings, beliefs, perceptions, and needs. Okay. And what, what are you doing? Instead, you're putting this person first. You're putting their thoughts and perceptions and needs first. And you don't realize that you just got yourself into a psychologically abusive relationship. Might quite likely this is a narcissist or it's a person with like a lot of narcissistic tendencies and you have just fallen for it. And the thing is that it's not your fault. Okay. And you're not stupid. And people fall for this stuff all the time, really bright, intelligent people. And, and, it, and it is these people. It is the people who are, who are intelligent and strong and compassionate and loving and forgiving and people who have like these very qualitative 
characteristics about themselves, but you know, why did they choose you is because you have these qualities and that's how you pre-qualified essentially because they don't they don't want to see you doing good and being successful and feeling good about yourself it's this constant continual undermining degradation putting down and they know that they very carefully built you up in all the ways that you most needed to hear it and you're most like dying to have appreciation because no one ever really appreciated you for that or maybe like growing up you know like you were berated for this or that or you were really criticized or maybe you just felt like nobody ever really listened to you or heard you or cared and so this person listened for exactly what that is they came in there they twisted that around they gave you everything that you wanted you know and then they took it all away and then they started giving it to someone else and giving you like the really horrible treatment and really it's just a projection of, of their own selves you know they're extremely insecure extremely insecure they have extreme feelings of unworthiness of not being good enough of being inferior and the only way that they know how to deal with that and this is just really really immature is that is that they, they need to make someone else feel lower you know first they put you up so that you feel like really amazing and then they just shut you down and they will destroy you I mean they will not stop until like you can't get out of bed and that's essentially what happens you know it's like over a period of time is they're just like they're just beating you down and beating you down and beating you down and like you're coming to accept that this is normal and you're coming to like make excuses for them and you know then you're no longer being able to be really productive at work maybe you get into some kind of problem at work or maybe if you're self-employed like your business kind of suffers because you just don't have the, the energy and the passion and, and everything that you normally would have. And then your social life fails, you know, because like you don't want to go out. You don't want to see people, one, because you don't want to tell them the truth about what's happening. Like deep down, you know what's happening. You don't want to admit it. And two, because you just feel like crap. Like you have no energy. You feel horrible about yourself. You feel like maybe you're a bad person or you just feel like you're not good enough. And like you don't even know like where are these feelings coming from? Like this is not who you are, but it's who you've become because of being in a relationship with this person. And this person doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. I mean, it could be like a boss or a coworker or a friend. They will come in all shapes and form and sizes and they'll work your way into your life, their way into your life in any way that they possibly can. You know that's just how they are and essentially what they're looking for is a supply of energy they want to suck you dry they want to take and take and take and you know the problem you can get into is you can get into this thing like well okay if I just give a little more then then now he'll want to give back or she'll want to give back if, if I just give a little more and we're so close now like we're so close to this or so close to that and then as soon as that happens then now this person can go back to being who they were at the beginning and they're always keeping you on that edge and you know that's why it's like a cycle right it's not just all meanness they're sure to keep giving you some of that sweetness it's called dosing you know they give you a little bit of that fix and you're like oh okay that feels good oh okay you know I got I got a hug or I got that really nice text today and now I'm like thinking back to who this person was at the beginning and I'm like okay it's all right this is the person that I, I fell in love with and it's gonna be okay but then like the next day or the next minute you know it's flipped around again and there is no way out of this situation but to get out and to get like as far away as possible and to cut off contact with this person because any and all contact is bad contact if they get you upset if they get you really angry or frustrated or desperate or like to the point like they're gaslighting you like they're lying to you and using like these environmental forms of deception like oh you know that's not happening oh you know how would you why do you think that no you're just you're just really sensitive that's not I didn't say I didn't mean that okay I said that but that's not what I meant you know it was just a joke all of these kinds of things you know these situations that just get you to really doubt yourself you're doubting your intuition you're doubting the perception that you know you're seeing a reality 
and and there's no out from there because the minute they they evoke a reaction for you whether it's positive and you're giving them love and praise and appreciation and forgiveness and understanding or whether you're giving them this like really angry you know how could you do this to me and this and that either way you're feeding them because whether you're giving them positive or negative attention they're getting attention from you and all that means to them is that they matter they're important I know it's just like it's this really twisted psychological thing and unfortunately like yeah they have a real problem like a real problem and you don't want to be part of that you don't want to be that supply you don't want to be that person that's there like a doormat that's just like in denial about what's happening and just thinking back to how things were or like you know just like holding on to those like those few things that they did that was just so amazing or maybe there were a lot of things that they did that were really amazing maybe they really really put it out there for you and you're just holding on to that and holding on to that and holding on to that hope and they know that you're a hopeful person and that's the sick thing you know and so you have to realize what's happening you have to realize that you are in a psychologically abusive relationship and you need to get out you need to get to safety and you need to do it as soon as possible you know and then you need to not respond to this person you need to like not respond to like those texts or that phone call like week days months later and suddenly they're trying to get back in your life and they're being all sweet again or they're or maybe they're even really being sorry and you think they're being sorry but they're not it's not it's not remorseful and maybe you let that person back into your life and that's the big mistake that's when they'll get you like a double whammy they're just waiting waiting for that you know and they're like inside they're like oh, this person is so stupid they're going to let me do it again so they deserve this they deserve this punishment they deserve being treated like that because they're willing to stand for it they're just so weak and vulnerable and i despise them and like that's truly like what they believe and that's really just a projection of their own their own selves you know but like what can you do about it well the first thing you need to do is get out absolutely get out cut off contact you know if this person is like the parent to your children or something you know now now you have like a lifetime relationship with this person but you absolutely need to measure that contact and be very careful that you're setting very clear boundaries that you do not let this person cross that you're setting up this net of safety in your life that this person cannot get back in and just start to like destroy you again and and this is crazy because this person will go to all lengths to protect their image they will get people against you they'll get your friends and your family against you by what they're saying they'll get your coworkers against you they they will make you feel like you are totally and utterly alone and like you're the crazy one right and the only way out is to get out and to cut everything off you know but once you've done that once you're out and you're free and you've cut off contact or at least like you've really mitigated that contact so that you're not getting sucked back in and you're very selectively sharing things with this person you're not telling them about your personal life you're not telling them about what's making you really happy or what's making you really sad you don't don't think that you're going to like gloat something and and be like oh look how amazing my life is right now you were setting yourself up to be smacked down none of that they don't deserve to know any of those details of your life and and once you're in that safe place now you know it's important to look back you know and to reflect like where were those signs like at what point did you see it because at some point you saw it you did and you and you shut you shut it down you stuffed it away you're like no no and you started to doubt yourself to second guess yourself that's what you need to really look at you know is why was i second guessing myself and in and if you look at the real causes of that it wasn't just about that person you know it's about something deeper you were trained to believe that that was normal you know someone in childhood taught you that there was someone it maybe most likely it was one of your parents but it could have been another caregiver or someone who had like a lot of contact with you and they made you believe that they were the most important that you know your feelings thoughts perceptions needs were definitely secondary to theirs and that if something was wrong with them you had to just dedicate all of your resources to like making sure everything was okay with them and like managing their emotions and like beefing up their sense of security or their sense of you know self-esteem and like made you responsible for that 
meanwhile not accepting any responsibility for themselves and essentially it's it's a form of abuse training like you learn to shut all that down and you learn to put someone else first and I think that's the most important thing to look at here is is that self-reflection the self-awareness you know it's not your fault it's not you know but you can change it and you definitely need to change the things about yourself that got you in there not the good qualities you know you don't need to change the wonderful things about you about how you're a giving person and you're compassionate and loving and understanding and forgiving and optimistic you don't need to change those things about yourself you just need to change your truth barometer you need to change that self-trust the inner intuition the connection you have you know and realize that you know you always know it's just that you're doubting yourself. Someone taught you to doubt yourself, to put yourself aside, to put someone else's beliefs and perceptions of reality first. That was a training. Okay? So when you realize that and you realize that was the cause, you were just taught that it was normal. You thought that was normal, that that was what a relationship is like. Right? And so you've become almost addicted to that and your even your nervous system like the way the the neurotransmitters and the hormones are released between the neural synapses and all the connections that are happening in your nervous system is trained to believe that this is normal to accept that this is normal right so you need to go back and change that process you need to upgrade your belief systems you need to upgrade your self esteem you need to upgrade your sense of self trust like those are the keys in, in the self-healing process. And that's what I want to help you with. You know, I want to help you to process the emotion, you know, from what happened because that was real. That happened and that was fracked up what happened to you. And it was undeserved. You did not deserve that. Okay, and it's important to look back at that because after you're getting out of one of those relationships, like you're just reeling in the whys. Why did this happen to me? Why did I not see that? Why would this person do that to me? Why, why, why? And you're just like, you can, you can almost lose, lose sense of your sanity asking these whys. And at a certain point, you know, you just need to accept that, like, that person has a real problem. That person is sick. You know, I'm not a psychologist. I can't diagnose anyone. But, you know, if you look in the DSM and you see the nine characteristics of a person with narcissistic personality disorder, NPD, and if they have minimum of five of those characteristics, according to the DSM, they have narcissistic personality disorder. It is an actual sickness, a mental illness. And the saddest thing is that you're not going to change that. Nothing is going to change that person except that person. And most likely, if they really are a narcissist, they're not going to have remorse. They're not going to accept accountability and responsibility for their actions. And they're not going to change. And, you know, the narcissism is their personality. Like, that's who they are. It is a personality disorder. And you can't change them. And you might sit there and go, oh, but, but my love, my love can change him. My love can make him want to give more. My love, no, no, it can't. And you need to realize that. And there's nothing wrong with you. You were just trained to believe that that's what you're supposed to do. And actually, that's not a healthy relationship. So that's why I'm here. I want to help you to self-heal from those situations, to process those difficult emotions that are left, and to integrate and extract the insights that you can take out of those experiences because somewhere in there you can learn something really valuable about yourself. And I want to teach you some powerful strategies that you can use to become more self more more self trusting to have a greater self esteem to become more self aware in general because that's the key to changing things is to become aware you know and and to understand that you know as i'm helping you self heal from this not just from what was done to you but from who you are and moving forward so you can make different choices at no point is this a blame 
you know, when people talk about codependency and the perfect relationship being that between a narcissist and a codependent, because the codependent will placate, will put themselves aside, will let the narcissist, you know, just kind of like rule the show and decide what goes and, and what it is and stuff. But don't, don't get trapped in that label either, because you are not a disempowered being. And there is nothing wrong with being a giving, compassionate, loving, understanding person. Those are good qualities. Really what you need to work on now is the self-trust. That's the key. It's about you're just doubting yourself. You know, and so what we're going to do here, if you want to tune into these webinars, they're totally free. Okay, there's nothing being sold. It's just information and it's valuable information. And you can come and ask your questions. There's always going to be a question and answer. So if you have a question, feel free to ask it and don't be ashamed because someone else probably has that same question. Somebody's probably thinking that exact thing, you know, and maybe they're ashamed to say it. So, you know, this is a non judgmental environment. It's going to be very supportive. I encourage you not to wallow in the victimhood of this because we are not victims. We are survivors. And I want to teach you how to thrive. Okay. You don't have to settle for mere survival. You can thrive in life. And that's what we're going to talk about. So every week we're going to just develop more and more this dialogue about the self healing process. And we're going to go into like, like particular areas about the process and go in deeper into certain things as I'm hearing from you what it is that that you need what it is that you're looking for what are you trying to change what are you trying to understand and what are like the common patterns that are happening so I encourage you to tune in. You can always click the link down below that says register now. It'll let you know what the upcoming webinars are and we hope to see you there. Remember that what happened to you was not your fault, but you can change it. See you soon.